Hello everybody, we're back again for another drum playthrough review. So for all of you who are brand new to these videos, my name is Nick, and I play drums, I play guitar, and a bunch of other instruments, and we like to watch these videos so that way we can analyze technique from other drummers and musicians, and learn and imbibe as much info as we can so that way we can better ourselves for the future. So, we got a really cool drummer on today. We got a drummer who's very scientifically inclined as far as the science of drumming and has taken a lot of things into consideration. And this is what has led him down the path that makes him create what kind of crazy stuff that he does. So we're talking about Spencer Pruitt from Archspire. Spencer Pruitt has been drumming for Archspire since the beginning and he has taken a lot of things into account for how to play drums, whether it be how his drums are set up to uh, different muscle groups that he's using as well. So that way he can most efficiently play drums and maximize his technique so that way he is able to get the best sound. He's somebody that actually at first, I'll be fully honest with you guys, thought was a little pretentious, but then honestly, after really sitting down and listening to him for a little bit longer, I was like, wow, actually, I, I never thought about that. This is this is really interesting. He's definitely, he used and pioneered a lot of different techniques. As far as extreme drummers go, he was doing a lot of techniques that I didn't even know existed, and I was always thinking that his videos were fake until I got wise to it, and then I learned. So that's what we're gonna do today is check out his video. Yeah. Without further ado, guys, we're going to get right into it. He's got the little aluminum bell from Tate. I, too, have one of those. He uses the red tip vinyl drumsticks, and I think that's funny because they kind of look like matchsticks. Or like a big french fry with ketchup on the end of it. Now look at this blasting technique. He's relying a lot on the rebound here. And he's relying a lot on the stick bounce. So he's using weight of your sticks as well. And his gravity blasting is just ping. Ping it. He's using double strokes as well. But he's using them in a different way that was uh, discussed previously in another video that I did. So when you, if you review the Slaughter to the Bell drum playthrough, um, and you watch that with me, you'll see how he did it the classic way in the Slaughter to the Bell playthrough. But on the Archfire playthrough here that we're doing, he's doing what's called the Cheater's Way. And really it's not cheating, it's just relying on the bounce of the pedal boards. Yeah, just absolutely phenomenal, too. If you look at, too, how he's drumming, he's not bringing his arms above his heart. He's actually talked about this in another video, because if you have to bring your arms above your heart, then your blood has to pump extra hard to get him up there to fight gravity. And I think that that's honestly a really interesting technique to take into effect as well when you're playing this stuff. using a lot of hip flexors as well to play some of these slower parts and then when he goes to the others other parts he's, he's using hip flexors as well but he's also doing double strokes and look at how his hand is too he's keeping that other finger nice and loose that shows that he's not gripping them too hard. He's relying a lot more on the stick's weight to carry through and not death gripping the stick, which is good. That's what you want. Very cool symbol fill there. Very interesting how he supports the solo with the double bass as well. Oh, no, no, no. 
I like how the camera shakes just a little bit too as he's doing it. Cause that, that makes for a cool effect. He's keeping very loose as well. Stay tech, yes, stay tech indeed. Spencer Pruitt once again bringing the fire. Now here's the thing, there's a lot of things to take into effect as far as Spencer Pruitt goes. He has broken down the science behind the physicality that is needed for drumming. And he's honestly broken down a lot of the stuff that we don't really think about a whole lot. Now there are other videos that he's done as well where he's on tour and he's talked about why his drum setup is the way that it is. Whether it's that it's a certain sound that he likes about it that you know, he wants to keep on his drum kit or whether or not there's an actual like reason behind the physiology that goes behind actually playing his instrument. He's got a lot of interesting techniques that he's got and that he employs very well. So for example, if you look at how his bass drums are set up, they're set up farther away from his drum kit. So his legs have to come out a little bit more. And what this does is this allows him to more isolate the hip flexors as well. So that way he can more effectively use them since they're a bigger muscle group and they can support a lot more tension as compared to the ankles. Now here's the only problem is, is that you can't necessarily go as fast with just the hip flexors. So that's why you see a lot of drummers nowadays they keep their bass drums a little bit closer and they rely on ankle. I myself am a little bit more of an ankle player. There's times where I switch between hip flexor and ankles just because I want to see whichever one's going to get me the best uh, sound depending on how fast I'm trying to play. But he also uses what's called the cheater's way for doing double bass, which is doing double strokes that are more reliant on the pedal board bouncing up. Now here's the thing. This is not cheating. Don't let people tell you otherwise. You can do it the John Long strengths way and you can do the ball of the foot and then the heel of the foot and go back and forth like that. Or you can do it where you curl up your toes and bounce your foot down, hit the pedal board once, and then as it bounces back up, you're hitting it again as you're coming back up. And that's what gets you that second stroke. That's more reliant on the pedal board being able to be bounced around so that way you can move the beater. Now, what does this require? In order to achieve this, it requires lighter beaters, higher spring tension on your pedal board so that way you can more easily bounce it around there's a lot more movement when it comes to it but yeah he's taking a lot of things into consideration one video i remember i saw of him he was talking about how he doesn't have anything set up where he has to reach his arms above his heart because of how much more work the heart has to do to pump the blood through the arms that are up above it because it has to fight gravity and i thought that that was really interesting so there are certain things on my drum kit that i actually mimicked after him as well as far as keeping everything kind of within like a certain wrist distance so i don't have to bring my arms like all the way up here the only exception is my chinas but i don't even have to bring my arms up for that i just have to keep them about right here but yeah absolutely phenomenal his stroking technique on his hands is amazing he's using kind of a combination between the molar technique and a little bit of fingers as well but basically for the molar technique it relies on your stroke basically one stroke to produce multiple different hits on the drum kit so this is an example of molar technique It is using one stroke to achieve multiple hits on your drum and a lot of it relies on rebound. So what helps with this is tuning your drums higher so that way you can actually get that good rebound. And this is pretty effective for if you're playing high speed stuff. And Spencer does this to a very expert level as well. He's very good about making sure everything stays uh, in time as well, that the do strokes don't sound off from each other while actually being able to maintain that high speed and keep his energy going for longer. So yes. Absolutely amazing job, Spencer Pruitt. I really can't wait to see another drum playthrough with one of the newer songs. Like, I'd love to see Drone Corpse Aviator, honestly, as a drum playthrough song. That would be sick. I would love to see that. But with all that being said, guys, we're going to cut the video here. So here's a couple things you guys can do to support me. For one, you can go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Whatever you guys want to do for that, that would really be appreciated. Also, check out my other videos that I have and the playlists that I have on my channel. I've got content that's a lot similar to this, so if you like this video, you'll probably like all that other stuff as well. And don't forget as well, check out my band page and all the other links that I have down below. There's a lot of cool stuff and cool music that I have coming out pretty soon, so don't forget to check that out. And with all that being said, guys, we'll cut the video here. Glad you guys stuck around for this long. I hope you guys have an amazing day, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers, everyone.